that he said, you know, if it's thick enough to be a pancake, there's two sides to every story. Yes. And, and, and Jesus said these words. He said, the greatest commandment is this, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And you know, sometimes it could be um, difficult to love your neighbor as yourself if you don't do what the pancake theory did. Yeah. To look at the other side and try to try to understand where they're coming I from. Hope. If, if there's any good in me, obviously it would come from the Lord Jesus. But anything that I could do to encourage someone else, I would be honored and humbled at that, I truly. Think. That's one of the reasons I didn't want to be on here with you because I couldn't imagine how I could contribute with, with some of the people that you've had. I've, I've been impressed, very impressed with what you do. Thank you. Thank I you. very much have, and it's encouraged me. <laughs> Well, thank you. Thank you. Hi, this is Robert Wilkins, a.k.a. Basketball Tall. Welcome to my channel. I'm glad that you're with me here today because I have someone very special that you're going to want to listen to. I'm currently here at the Trinity Baptist Church in the office of Brother Associate Pastor Jim May. And he's allowed me this opportunity to interview him so he can bestow some words of wisdom. But not just that. That's a whole lot more, so stay tuned for that. Brother May, thank you for allowing me to be here today. And uh, it is an honor, and I just want to let you know how grateful I am that I'm here to be in front of a man of God. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but tell me, you know, uh, where did you come from? Where, how did you get started? You know, uh, you know, what was your calling to be in the ministry, to save lives, you know, turn people's lives around and give their life to God? Wow. Well, um, actually, um, my, my background was not always good. I came from, um, uh, and uh, we, were, we were at Lake Murray one day, and my, my dad was killed in an accident. And I realized that when my dad died, that um, that could have been me. And uh, a pastor came to our house that was going to preach my dad's funeral. And uh, he basically shared Christ with us. And, and uh, he actually taught me how to love Jesus. And uh, from that point on, I started serving the Lord and got involved in youth ministry. And I worked at the Michelin plant, actually, for 16 years. And when I was working there at, um, and, and working with the youth, God started literally calling me to preach. And it literally became a dream of mine to be able to do that. But I never really thought, because of my lack of education, I only had a high school education, that God could ever use me in that way. And so um, God gave me the opportunity to serve him as a pastor. And so... I responded to his call, and uh, from that point on, I actually I took seminary courses, and I have a diploma in Christian studies now, and have been doing this, uh, what I'm doing presently, for 16 years. And so I truly feel like a blessed man. Um, you know, I, I, not many people get to live their dreams, and that's, that's what I get to do. I, I pastored for, was a senior pastor for 10 years. And as I was doing that, um, I got involved in mission work. And uh, I knew that God was just burning and a desire in my life to do that full time. And this church literally has allowed me to, uh, Trinity Baptist here in Ardmore, to live my God-called dream of serving in missions. And this is the first year in 25 years, literally, that I've not been on a mission trip. And it's only because of COVID-19, but we are cranking up to, uh, to start mission work again this summer. So I'm a very blessed man. You know, you talk about living your dreams. And, you know, my channel is about that. It's about uplifting, it's about motivating, encouraging. It is. Giving people hope and direction that they too can become more what they think they can become. And we're talking about the dream. And here you are, that's the first time I've ever heard anyone say that's in the ministry that they were living their dream. I, I, I live my dream and I, I never ever, you know, it, 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 I don't really know how to explain it, but I, I, I resisted the call of the Lord because I thought it was my call and not his because I wanted so badly to do what God allows me to do. 
and you know my advice to others would be you know whether it be for ministry or whatever if you know if you have a dream to understand that that you know uh, a desire in your heart to do something don't waste your time doing things that you don't enjoy when ultimately God has much much more ahead for you and for me truly um, uh, I get paid I get paid brother Robert I get paid to tell people about Jesus Christ they pay for my health insurance um, when I worked at Michelin all those things that Michelin uh, provided for me this church provides for me except here I get to do what God's called me to do and not only that but I get to do honestly what I love to do what and, and you know is I look around my office you see these pictures of mission trips and things we've been on I also have a book here of, of other mission trips uh, that 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 I've been on and the reason I have them in the book is because there was no place left to put on the wall and uh, you know for me the lives that God has allowed us to touch and be a part of is just something that I never in my wildest dream imagined that God would allow me to do I have relationships active relationships in Mexico I have active relationships in Africa I have acts uh, active relationships in Ecuador plus in the motorcycle ministry I have lots of friends that uh, are, are in that ministry as well that God allows me to 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 be with and you know as I think about that um, you know who could who could imagine Robert that that you could get paid to ride a motorcycle <laughs> and tell people about Jesus Christ and you know and, and to change a life and uh, you know, uh, only God could do that, and I'm, I'm grateful to him. And I'm grateful now for the people of Trinity Baptist Church that have allowed me to do this. My, I, I can't say with words how grateful I am to be of service to them and the Lord. Wow, that's so, awesome. That, yeah. that is really awesome. You know, you, you talked about, you know, the motorcycle ministry. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you and I, we met several years back. We did. And uh, then, you know, and every day I would get off work and I would pass by your house and I saw you had a motorcycle out for sale. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And it was a big bike, you know, a Kawasaki 1500 Vulcan, you know, a big cruiser, you know. And uh, so one day I finally decided I'm going to stop by, I'm going to stop and I'm going to just look at this bike because I never owned a motorcycle. Yeah. And as a child, you know, you always wanted a motorcycle, you know, a mini bike. Then, of course, you know, grow into the motorcycle. And uh, and I stopped that day and you came out and uh, you told me I could take it for a ride. Yeah. <laughs> you bought it without riding it. You did. Yeah, that's right. I forgot about yeah. that. But that day you told me to take it for a ride. I was scared to death to get on it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I didn't know how to ride it. Yeah. <laughs> that was a big, powerful bike. And uh, my wife and I, we were on vacation in Miami, and you gave me a call, and you asked me if I was still interested in that bike. And I told you that I was, because you said if someone else was interested in it. Yeah. And I said, you know, put my name on it. You yeah. Know? And uh, when I came back, I, like you said, you delivered the bike to me. I did. You know, I've forgotten <laughs> that, brother. And uh, that bike sat up under my uh, patio, for, I don't know, a long time before wow. I went to the basic motorcycle riding class in Oklahoma City. Wow. <laughs> so I just wanted you to know that. You didn't know that. Yeah. But I was fearful of that big bike. Wow. and uh, But I wanted it. And I thank you for that. And I still have it this day. Well, um, riding motorcycles has been, uh, again, as, as I love to ride motorcycles. And, and it's kind of been a passion of mine, too. And again, um, not many people really get to do what they truly love to do, but I'm one of those people that I'm, I'm totally blessed that I get to, I get to live my dream. And, I, and I not only live my dream, but I get to live um, what I believe to be that what God has called me to do and sharing his love with others. And uh, you know, I love people, uh, people like you, how God put us together. We've been friends. And you know, and it wasn't the greatest of meetings, you know, it was a, through what you used to do and uh you know and you were a, a great man and and you came and spoke at our church i don't know if you mm -hmm. remember that i remember you did. that to the kid you, to yeah. kid you uh -huh. did you know and, and I, I still remember your message you brought the law book and you <laughs> bought 
the Bible and you bought a pair of handcuffs, if you remember. <laughs> yeah, I remember. And you said, if, if, if you don't live by, you said, if you don't live by the Bible, then you'll have to answer to the law. Yeah. And, you know, and, and you know, you made a believer out of me for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, you talked about your mission work. Yes. And, uh, you know, you invited me to go with you down I did. in South America, I believe, somewhere. Mexico. Acapulco, yeah. Mexico. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, you know, I wasn't able to go at that time. But I got to also tell you, I was a little fearful, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you told me that, I still remember, you were taking your son to, um, to look at colleges. Mm -hmm. And uh, back east, I believe, that was a, it was a nice college, I remember that. And, but that, that yeah, offer, that? since we're on air here, mm -hmm. um, you can, you can, you, you, that offer is still alive. You can, you can live a part of my dream by going with me to Acapulco, Mexico. And doing what you love to do, and teaching basketball, mm -hmm. and you could bring some young men or young ladies from your church, and uh, and, and we could go down there and work together. And, and I have interpreters, and I have people that safe places to stay. And you would teach basketball, and you could even preach, because what we do in the basketball um, camps that we put on, um, we have a break where everybody comes in. And we have a speaker that shares the gospel. And whether you can speak Spanish or not, uh, we would have somebody interpret for you. And they would certainly like to hear from you. And because of your height, in Mexico, most people are uh, five, eight, or nine and below. Someone like you would be considered a rock star. <laughs> That's true. We, we took a guy six six. They could not believe that anyone could exist that was 6'6", six, six. and you're, you're taller than that, right? No, I'm 6'6". Six, six. Okay, well, great. So, um, he, this guy could dunk the ball. You can dunk the ball, right? Not anymore. Oh, you can't. Well, <laughs> this, this was a kid. Well, there'll would, be a stretch for me to yeah. try now. Yeah. <laughs> but I know you could bring somebody that could dunk the oh, ball. Yes. If you can dunk a basketball in Mexico, you're a star. And anyways, they, they introduced, not me, but the team that we took as professionals. And uh, we had a great time sharing the love of Jesus with them and, and uh, lots of good people around the world that a lot of folks don't get to meet that I do. Mm. So I'm blessed. Yes, you are. And I not am. just that, you do mission work overseas as well. I, I, I work in, right now, um, what, we, what I do, what I lead in in this church, we work in Malawi, Africa. That has become an annual trip for us. That one year I went twice. We're also working in southern Mexico, and uh, I have been to Mexico as many as four or five times a year. And uh, what we've been focusing on lately in Mexico, because we don't have a basketball guy like you, Brother Robert, now, <laughs> <laughs> is uh, medical missions. And we have a doctor that's an optometrist. And we take, through the Lions Club, uh, thousands of pairs of glasses, and then we have a doctor examine them, and we give them glasses, and all of our four or five people in our church, we work as a team to help the doctor out. And of course, um, because we are giving them glasses, um, we sh of course share the gospel with every person that comes through the line. And many people come to Christ. And also, um, the group we go with, we, we have dentists, we have doctors, and we provide uh, all kinds of medical care to people in Mexico. Mexico has, their laws are a lot less um, how do you say this? Their laws uh, allow lay people like myself to assist in medical and, and medical uh, missions, and so um, there's no danger in doctors being sued for malpractice or anything like that in Mexico, like there is here. Mm. So we do dental dental work on a basketball court. We do uh, mild surgical procedures, believe it or not, on a basketball court. And we provide eyeglasses for, we probably provided eyeglasses for 20 or 30,000 people, literally, mm. in the years that we've been doing this. That's kind of our, our staple is uh, eye care. And we have a doctor by the name of Dr. Daniel Woods who works with the Chickasaws. That's, that's who employs him. And he goes with us on an annual trip, and we do that. Well, well tell me this now. You mentioned to me before you know, we started recording here that you were born in California. I was. Okay, tell us about that and how you got to migrate to Oklahoma. Okay, my, my, uh, my, my great-grandfather died um, of tuberculosis during the Dust Bowl. And so my, my, 
my grandmother and my father, uh, during the Dust Bowl, moved to California to find work. And uh, so, as my dad grew up and he married my mother and, and uh, my grandmother married another guy out there, they came back to Oklahoma to farm. And my dad uh, had a family, so we stayed out there. Me and my brother would, would travel to Oklahoma uh, to spend the summers on my grandparents' farm. And we begged our parents to move. And so when I was 14 years old, they moved us out here to the farm. And so from the age 14 till now, uh, I've been in rural Oklahoma. I, I guess I'm not in rural Oklahoma now, but, um, but I was as a, in my younger days. So, You know, uh, I, I remember when I came to Oklahoma from Louisiana. And, uh, you know, all I knew about Oklahoma was cowboys and Indians. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the funny thing about it is my grandpa, when I was telling him about when I go home, you know, doing, you know, the uh, breaks and so forth, and I would tell him about, you know, Oklahoma and the Indians and, and all of that. And no disrespect to anybody, but to be honest, he would say, what do they look like? <laughs> How do they dress? Yeah. What do they live in? Because, you know, he watched these Westerns. And, yes. and that's why a lot of people were still thinking that. And even my mama's brother, my uncle, he thought the same thing, asking uh, me these questions. You yeah. know? So you can imagine when coming to Oklahoma and seeing Oklahoma is modernized just like all the other states. It is. <laughs> but, you know, Oklahoma people are definitely different than the big city people. Yes. And I, I, I deeply love Oklahomans and for the most part, that's, I don't even tell people that I'm from California, not any disrespectfulness to them. But Oklahoma people, um, I remember that, I remember one of the stories, when we started getting close to Oklahoma, my dad started waving when he'd meet cars. And I remember, <laughs> I'd never seen that before. And I asked my dad, I said, Dad, do you know them? And he said, no, in, in Oklahoma, he said, everybody waves. You know, I didn't really get it at the time, but Oklahomans, uh, when, when I was younger, they didn't even lock their homes. And you know, they welcomed and it was, it was a great place to live. You know, coming from where I did in a big city in California, we would never go to bed without locking our doors. And, and we never locked our doors uh, in Oklahoma. I know that's changed some now, but Oklahomans um, certainly grasped me and I certainly embrace them as well because um, I love Oklahoma, I do. And, I'm definitely an Oklahoma Sooner fan. Too, so, <laughs> you know, brother May, I, uh, you know, I'm African American, as you know. Yeah. And what you just said about the wave, we're all over the place, and people are just, you know, you're passing by people in their cars, and they're, and they're, everybody was waving. Yeah. And I was like, well, what's this? I've never experienced this before. Yeah. <laughs> and so, what you said is so true, and it was across the board for all people. Yes. And and it's unfortunate. In today's time, you know, the things that's going on in our country and, and for people around the country, you know, they have a tendency to maybe look at what's going on for us, politics and even the bombing that occurred in the 90s in Oklahoma City yeah. would paint a bad picture and think in Oklahoma's that way when it's actually not. No, it's not. Not at all. No. It's the friendliest place I've ever been. It, for me as well. Mm -hmm. And I, I love Oklahomans and... and and you know, uh, as a matter of fact, when, uh, when my grandfather passed away in, in, in California from my mom's side, when I went back, um, I didn't realize at that time that I'd gotten the Oklahoma thing too. And so we were driving to the grocery store, me and my uncle and my little cousin. And so I was doing the Oklahoma wave <laughs> and it was embarrassing my little cousin. And she said, dad, does he know them? And and Uncle Jim said, Terry, leave them alone. They do that in Oklahoma. <laughs> I like that. We're going to turn that the Oklahoma way. <laughs> yeah. And so I realized then that, my goodness, that they don't do that everywhere. But Oklahomans as a whole, as you know, it's a blessed place to, yes. to live. We, yes. um, you know, and, and where me and you live, I mean, in, in Ardmore, that it's a safe place. Yes. I mean, you know, yes. we don't. I've never feared for my life here. <laughs> and, you know, we're very diverse here, too. We are. You know, let me ask you one more thing. And, you know, based on the climate of things today and, uh, you know, the, the divisiveness and all the things that's going on, you know, the news, how everything is built up and, you know, just a whole lot of stuff going on. There is. 
What do you have any comments, anything that you would like to say about any of that? Well, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of ironic, but um, uh, I was watching uh, your channel. Oh, and, Basketball Tall. Yeah, I was. And, <laughs> thank you, and thank you. Know, you. Um, Something that's, that's, that's truly stuck in my mind is the pancake theory, that, that your former, I guess he was your coach, that's now the president of ECU. Assistant coach. Okay. That he said, you know, if it's thick enough to be a pancake, there's two sides to every story. Yes. And, and, and Jesus said these words. He said, the greatest commandment is this, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And you know, sometimes it could be um, difficult to love your neighbor as yourself if you don't do what the pancake theory did, yeah. to look at the other side and try to, try to understand where they're coming from. And for us, uh, you know, I think if we would take the time, truly, to, to not try to judge people, but just try to see where they're coming from and understand their point of view, life would be a whole lot better for all of us. And, you know, that's obviously what the Lord would want us to do is to, to love and, and treat others like we would want to be treated ourselves. Yes. And so, you know, uh, but I, I thought that that guy from East Central was, uh, I, he had some really good common sense things that really made me think. And uh, that actually, I don't even know that he knows this or not, that, that go along with the Word of God, with the Bible. God wants us to look at others. Yes. God doesn't want us to look at color. Or, or where folks live. Yes. Or, you know, he wants us to, to look at others like he does. And I, if we could do that, it would be a much, much better place to live, for sure. And the gentleman you talked about, that's Dr. Gerald Williamson. I was very much impressed by him. Oh. Well, very much. Well, I'm sure he's going to hear this. Well, that's, that, that <laughs> you know, I, I've, told, I've told the pancake theory. Believe it or not, we were talking about politics, and, and one... One person was, was, was slamming the other side. And I said, I told them about the pancake theory. And I said, do you know why they think that way? You know, maybe, maybe you should try to see. There's two sides to every story. Yes. And I said, you know, I, I told them what he said about it. if it's thick enough to be a pancake, there's, it has two sides. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's pretty good. Made me, made me think. That's one of the reasons I didn't want to be on here with you because I couldn't imagine how I could contribute with with some of the people that you've had. I've, I've been impressed, very impressed with what you do. Thank you. Thank I you. very much have, and it's encouraged me. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank it, you. It, it has. And so. your words already, right now, I can assure you, it, it's given a great contribution, and it's going to benefit some Well, people. I hope. If, if there's any good in me, obviously, it would come from the Lord Jesus, but anything that I could do to encourage someone else, I would be honored and humbled at that, truly. Thank you, and amen to that. <laughs> All right, Brother May, before we wrap up here, <clears throat> is there anything that's on your heart, on your mind, that you would like to say? I'll give you the final word. Wow, well, um, I, if, if, if I had anything to say, I would just like to thank the Lord Jesus um, for allowing me as I started to, to live my dream in life. And I think that um, there's different dreams in life, but God has a dream for everybody, and God had us a desire. And uh, that if, 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 if you would just allow the Lord Jesus Christ to, um, to lead, guide, and direct your pathways, your life would be so much greater. And, and for me, the Lord has, I mean, I don't feel like I really have a significant um, position or anything like that, but what God has given me has been the greatest life that I could ever imagine. And, um, you know, uh, the, the scripture tells us to love the Lord uh, your God with all your heart, your, all your mind, and with all your soul. And it also says in another place in that he will give you the desires of your heart. And that's what he's certainly done for me. He's given me the desires of my heart, and I, I can't thank him enough. And so I love what you're doing, Brother Robert, and, uh, and encouraging others and a lot of people out there that need encouragement, you know, and and that, that need to know that they can make a difference. And, and if someone, if you were to ask me, um, who were you, who, who are you? I would say I'm a tire builder. I built t tires from high school for 16 years. And God called me from building tires to doing what I do today. So I would say that, that um, um, 
if God puts something on your heart to follow that and, and God will bless you like he's blessed me. But don't, don't continue doing, doing things that you don't enjoy doing because you fear that you're not able to succeed in something else. Because if I had done that, I would never have gotten to live the dream that I live today. And that's what I would say to you, Brother Robert. Wow, wow. And Brother May? Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Thank God you. bless you, thank brother. You. Thank you so much. And from the audience, thank you for tuning in. Thank you.